Tesla themselves just leaked a brand new feature that is coming soon to totally change your Tesla. We've got some new news on the 2022 holiday update, and trust me, it is going to be amazing. Plus, Tesla wait times have dramatically improved. Tesla is continuing to open up their supercharger network, which isn't necessarily good news. And also, if you're looking for the best Tesla Black Friday and Cyber Monday deals, I've got the best accessories and the best accessory sales right down below in the description that you actually need to know about, the ones that are actually worth your time. I'm going to show you some of my favorite in just a moment in this video. As always, there is so much crazy stuff going on in the wild world of Tesla. We've got new leaks and rumors about new changes, new features, new apps, new upgrades, new models. Models. Let me tell you everything you need to know that is happening in the Tesla world right now. And a huge thanks to Masterworks for sponsoring this video. First off, let's start with some good news for those of you who are looking to buy a Tesla here in the US. Now, for like well over a year, if you wanted to buy a Tesla brand new, you were waiting months, if not almost a year, for specific models of the Model 3 and Model Y. But good news now is that those uh, delivery windows have dramatically decreased and you can get your car way, way sooner, pretty much kind of guaranteed before the end of the year. According to the site, the Model 3 rear wheel drive, the Model 3 performance, and the Model Y performance can all be delivered before the end of the year. While the Model Y long range, one of the most popular cars on the road today, has a little bit of an extended delivery window with an estimate between December and March. So maybe you get lucky and you get a little bit of a Christmas surprise with this coming before the end of the year, or maybe you get it early next year, which might actually be to your advantage, but Come back to that more in a moment. Also again, just a reminder for those of you interested in the cheapest Model Y version, the new dual motor standard range Model Y. Looks like again, this is coming very soon. Tesla got the official EPA approval for it. Giga Texas has been building them since it opened months ago. And it could be a really great option to see when it launches literally at any moment. There are rumblings that we could see this in early 2023, if not maybe at the end of 2022. So if you're looking to save some money on a Model Y and you're open to the standard standard range model, which is a great option, I'd wait a little bit to see if it's going to officially be opened for ordering uh, in the next couple of weeks. So stand by on that. And as soon as I've got an update, I'll let you know very soon. But it looks like we are at all systems going. This could literally launch at any moment. Okay, next up, let's talk about what could potentially be a really big leak and a really great new feature in all Teslas. And that is that Apple Music might possibly be coming to your Tesla, which could open the floodgates of more options for music. Beyond just Spotify, we could see Audible, we could see Pandora, we could see YouTube Music, we could see all the other different music streaming options. Seems like this actually might be happening according to a recent leak. Just about a week or so ago, when Zoom officially announced their Tesla app, some super sleuths noticed that the music icon in the Tesla in the video seem different from the one that Tesla normally uses now and one that could look very similar to an Apple Music app. And then one very um, super sleuthy Tesla fan went to the Peterson Automotive Museum's new Tesla exhibit, which I'll actually show off more in a moment, and found that Apple Music was officially on a demo car. And then a Tesla engineer officially confirmed, yes, it's Apple Music is officially coming to all Tesla vehicles, potentially in the big holiday update by the end of the year, or maybe a little bit earlier in one of the newer updates coming basically at any moment. And not only is this really great, but everybody's excited for a couple other reasons. One is that now if Apple Music is here and Tidal is here and Spotify is here, then more media streaming options could be coming. Maybe we do get YouTube Music and Audible and other media streaming options coming very soon since sort of the floodgates are beginning to ever so slightly open. And then again, we've heard renewed rumors that Tesla is working on an app store and that while Zoom is going to launch and Apple Music is going to launch very soon in the new year, maybe even before the end of the year, Tesla is officially going to launch this app store that's going to allow third-party developers and official companies to develop apps that can be installed right on your Tesla. And we're also hearing right now that you can buy these apps for free or for you know actual paid money and they'll be synced across all your Teslas and tied to your Tesla account. Obviously, this is really exciting. Cannot wait to try Apple Music on the Tesla officially sometime very soon. But in the meantime, uh, I'm also very excited for the App Store coming very soon as well. So lots of really cool news here uh, in the Tesla community this week. Cannot wait for Apple Music to drop literally at any moment. 
Okay, now before we continue with more Tesla news, let's take a break for just a moment and talk for a moment about this video sponsor, an amazing company, and that is Masterworks. Unfortunately, as of recording this video, Tesla stock is down 54% year to date. And it's not just them. There have been days where 99% of stocks have lost value. Of course, though, it's important that uh, you look at the long story, not the short story. Stocks like Tesla are long-term investments, but many of us are looking at our portfolios these days and thinking, I'm diversified with my investments, but why is my portfolio still just getting wrecked? Well, Goldman Sachs actually just released a pretty shocking report saying that the classic stock bond strategy won't be enough to keep investors afloat. It's down 34% this year alone, its worst performance in 100 years. And as a result, Goldman says the ideal allocation for stocks has shrunk from 60% down to around 45% now. So what do they recommend you do with that difference in order to try to salvage your stolen returns? Well, the answer is pretty straightforward and simple. It's to invest in real assets like fine art. I know, trust me, sounds surprising, but Goldman Sachs says that fine art can protect your purchasing power even in the face of rising prices like what we're seeing right now. In fact, the last time inflation was this high, it appreciated an incredible 17.5% per year on average. And like many of you watching this video, I had no idea that art could be such a financial asset. But now that I know and you know, and now that we're sort of looking for an easy way to invest in blue chip art, the best way to do it, the one that makes it the most simple, most streamlined, and the way to easily start right now is with the help of, like I mentioned before, this video sponsor, Masterworks. Masterworks has revolutionized the art buying process, allowing you to easily invest in blue chip art. Also, in fact, this platform files their paintings with the SEC, turning legendary art into an actual investment for a fraction of the full price. And they've had a total of eight exits, with five of them this year alone, and Masterworks' last three exits delivered 17 21 and 33 percent net returns and one of those was literally three weeks ago for a 17.8 percent net that's just incredible to see and as a result masterworks has had to acquire and release more art on their platform to sort of meet this growing demand and there's a wait list now to get started but luckily you guys watching this video can skip the wait list by using my special link right down below in the description so if you want to learn more about masterworks check out the service for yourself today easily invest in blue chip art and really now more importantly than ever diversify your portfolio. Fine art is a wonderful way to go and Masterworks makes this entire process super simple and super easy. So if you want to learn more today about Masterworks and skip the waitlist, click my link right down below to learn more and get started and skip that waitlist for yourself today. Now, one of the other interesting topics we've got to cover in this video is the long-awaited, long-rumored Model 2. This would be a cheaper Tesla vehicle that's supposed to be an affordable, mass-market EV powerhouse when it launches, and according to Elon, the company is committed and actively working right now to make it happen and make it hit the road sooner than later. After we had heard the project was paused a few months ago, Elon confirmed that the new vehicle development team is working on this next generation platform at a recent interview, and that the company is taking all of their learnings from the S, the X, the 3, and the Y, and the Cybertruck to make sweeping improvements to this new platform and to this new car that they expect to be a top seller when it launches, outperforming both the Model 3 and the Model Y as this new EV that everyone's gonna love and that's here for the masses to make a widespread EV adoption. Uh, possible and make it really, really easy and more affordable and more attainable than ever before. But there's of course one big question or a few big questions. What's the price gonna be? What's it gonna look like? And when are we actually going to see it? Now, in terms of pricing, at one point, Tesla was fighting to reach a sub $30,000 vehicle price but I wouldn't be surprised given the current landscape and the demand that by the time launches, maybe this is like more of a 35,000-ish dollar car, $40,000 car, but can be made cheaper with incentives, federal tax rebates, and maybe even the potential fuel savings as well, a number Tesla loves to push all over their site. And little is really known on the design of the Model 2, but many expect it to be sort of a smaller, pared-down version of the Model 3. So here are some renders that we had seen. Many thought that Tesla could take some of those early prototypes and sort of make that into a uh, Model 2. So maybe you'd have no glass panoramic roof, you'd have cloth seats, you'd have a smaller screen. There are definitely ways that Tesla could cut costs and save money, but still bring a great electric premium Tesla experience that the company is known for to this cheaper Tesla. So hopefully it looks something like this and launches pretty soon. 
Okay, next, let's talk about some controversy happening in the Tesla world right now that is good news and bad news, depending on who you ask, and that that is that Tesla is opening up uh, to everyone the schematics and the design and all the details of what was sort of their proprietary charging system. So basically, Tesla is giving all the info for their charger, giving it to the world for all EV makers to implement and use on their own cars and chargers too. And on one hand, this could be a good thing. We could see a lot of different accessories come and cheaper third-party cables and uh, different uh, accessories and vehicles come that use this charger and sort of having this as a more widespread option is not a bad thing. It's a good thing to see this more as a universal standard. Uh, because of that, we'd see better adoption from chargers. Again, like we could see uh, maybe some third-party sellers make cheaper alternatives or cooler accessories for this. Not having a locked Tesla could lead to some good things. The problem though with this is that the more popular this Tesla connector gets with third-party EVs and the more the Tesla opens up their ecosystem from just serving Tesla vehicles and Tesla owners to all EV owners, the more Tesla owners lose out on perks and the less exclusive and functional things like superchargers become to those who bought their Tesla just to use on that exclusive fast charging network. And many are concerned that by Tesla doing this, by them opening up superchargers and opening up their charging cable and doing this all open to the world, that they're going to take away the perks that many Tesla owners have relied on. Many have bought Teslas over other EVs just for the supercharging network and its capabilities, and now having it open is going to take some of that exclusivity away and could mean bad news for owners who rely on those superchargers. Again, there's a lot of ifs, maybes, ands, buts in this argument. Uh, obviously, Tesla sees this as a good thing. It's nice to see sort of them expand this out to more EV owners. Uh, but what are your thoughts on this? Do you think that Tesla should keep their charger and their supercharger network just to Tesla owners who paid for this uh, to use it exclusively? Or do you think it's a good thing for them to open it up to the wider EV landscape and sort of let everyone in on this technology and sort of, uh, even if it means more crowded supercharging stations and uh, uh, less uh, reliability and stuff like that, do you think it's worth it in the long run? If it's a growing pains, let me know your thoughts to this controversy down below. So next up, let's talk Black Friday deals. This video is going up on Black Friday, but I'm gonna have deals linked down below between Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and basically every day in between and after. There are always Tesla accessory sales going on, so I want to uh, point you to the best down below in the description. One of the ones going on right now is for some really awesome uh, wheel covers uh, that sort of replace the 19-inch or 20-inch wheels on the Model 3, or in this case, the Model Y here, with some awesome ones that make it look like you have performance tires. I'm gonna do a video on this in my uh, upcoming best Tesla accessories video, but if you do want to check them out, I'll leave a link to those down below, as well as some other of the best Tesla Black Friday deals I can find. I am scouring the web to find the very best, and whatever I find that is actually worth your time, I will leave linked right down below in the description. Okay, last up, but certainly not least, I had the chance to go to a media preview of the all-new Tesla exhibit, the Peterson Automotive Museum here in LA, and I gotta say, it is really, really cool. They had some awesome Tesla memorabilia, including the short shorts, uh, you had the Tesla tequila, the surfboard, they had the actual uh, tool used to break the Cybertruck windows there uh, at that infamous 2019 launch. They had some cool 4680 battery cells you could check out. There was sort of an inside look at uh, the batteries inside of a Tesla. There was sort of a uh, skeleton, a uh, sort of like mid-air, um, what is it? Like, I don't even know how to describe this, like a breakdown of all the different components inside of a Tesla. They had some prototypes models of the prototype Model S, the Model 3, the Model X, they had the Roadster, they had the Semi, and then of course, what everyone wants to see, they had the 2019 Cybertruck on display as well. Really, really cool exhibit, uh, really awesome to check out. And again, if you're in the LA area, the Peterson Automotive Museum has a bunch of cool exhibits. If you're into cars, I'm sure it's a staple in the LA community. It's, I think it's really well known around the world. It's a really great auto museum. And the Tesla exhibit is really cool. Oh, Cyberbot was there as well. Got some footage of that as well. So there's a lot of cool exhibits there. Lots of cool stuff to check out. If you want to check out it, it's opening now. It should be open now. And I'll have all the info and dates down below on when it's going to be open from and when it's going to be open to. And you can check it out if you're in the area. Really cool. And thanks to the Peterson Automotive Museum PR team for having me out and letting me check it out a little bit early. Really, really cool stuff. 
All right, guys, so what are your thoughts on the biggest Tesla news of the week? Your thoughts on the continued opening of the Charger Network, a good thing or a bad thing? Plus, your thoughts on the new discounts possibly coming soon. Would you want a Made in China Model 3 or Model Y here in the U.S. if you could get it for a discount? Also, your thoughts on other changes that could be coming. Let me know your thoughts on all the Tesla news of the week down below. I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I'm Robert Rosenfeld. I'll see you all in the next one.